This video is going to be about the osteology of, of ribs. And I've selected this right rib um, to use for my demonstration. And I'll be talking about characteristics of the rib that will assist you in determining the side of the body that the rib is from. Um, you can think of ribs as forming elastic arches. This is the head of the rib, and so this is posterior, and it attaches, or excuse me, articulates with vertebral bodies forming synovial joints. And the, so those synovial joints are movable joints. And then anteriorly, you see this concavity here, this concave oval area, that articulates with non-articular hyaline cartilage, which is very flexible. And then that costal cartilage or hyaline costal cartilage articulates with the sternum, at least for the first seven ribs. And that articulation is a synovial joint. So the ribs connect the vertebral bodies posteriorly with the sternum anteriorly. So let's look at the head of the rib. On the head of the rib, there are two facets, a superior one and an inferior one. And notice the larger one is the more inferior one. And separating those two facets is a crest that's transversely running. So these two facets articulate with two separate vertebrae. So this inferior facet articulates with a demi facet of on the body of the same numbered or corresponding vertebra. So if this was rib six, this would articulate with the demi facet on the body of T6. And it would be on the superior aspect of the body. And then this superior facet on the head of the rib would articulate with the superjacent or the vertebra that's superiorly positioned. And so that would be T5. So if this is rib six, the superior facet would be articulating with the demi facet on the body of T5. And the inferior facet on the larger inferior facet on the head of the rib would articulate with the demi facet on the body of T6. This crest here is the site of ligament attachment. There's an intra articular ligament that attaches the crest of the head of the rib to the intervertebral disc between T5 and T6 in this case. Now, the intervertebral discs in the thoracic region are very um, um, short or they're very small in, or short in height. So the size of the disc or the height of the disc in the thoracic region is very small in comparison to the height of the vertebral bodies. So this transverse crest gives you an idea and the closeness of these two facets gives you an idea of how short the disc is in height in the thoracic region. So this is the head of the rib again, and it's posteriorly positioned, articulating with two vertebral bodies forming costovertebral joints, which are synovial joints. And that those joints are stabilized by ligaments called radiate ligaments. Now, if you have a head, you have a neck. So, I'm going to look at it this way. Here's the neck of the rib. And then this is the tubercle of the rib. The tubercle of the rib. And it has an articular facet on it and a non-articular portion. So the articular facet on the tubercle of the rib is for articulation 
with a facet on the transverse process of the corresponding rib. That is a synovial joint, costo transverse joint, and it's stabilized by multiple costo transverse ligaments. Now let's look at the internal surface. So the ribs have an internal surface that's concave, an external surface that's convex, and then two borders, an inferior border and a superior border. The inferior border tends to be sharper and the superior border tends to be more rounded. On the internal surface, near the inferior border, you can see a groove. This is the costal groove. And the intercostal neurovascular bundle travels in that groove and is protected by the rib. So starting here, this would be the posterior intercostal artery and vein and intercostal nerve that are traveling in this groove. The anterior intercostal artery and vein would be anteriorly positioned and uh, there, they would not travel much in that groove. Most of the groove is posteriorly positioned. So I've already named two things that can help you side or determine right or left when you look at a rib. One is comparing the two facets on the head. The inferior facet is usually larger. But the easier thing to use is the costal groove. The costal groove is near the inferior border. So you can tell superior from inferior using the costal groove and then knowing that the external surface is convex, you should be able to side the rib that you're looking at or determine whether it's right or left. Now, when you're studying the ribs, you want to think about um, what muscles attach to the ribs and look at the ribs on an articulated skeleton to see where those muscles attach relative to each other. So to name some that attach to external surfaces, the serratus anterior attached to, attaches to the external surfaces of ribs one through eight. The external oblique attaches to external surfaces. Then when we look at the inferior border, you want to think about the internal intercostal muscles. In, in, um, on the internal surface, you want to think about the innermost intercostal muscles. I don't think I mentioned the external intercostal muscles attaching to the ribs. So there, that's just naming a few muscles that attach to ribs. So think about the ribs when you look at them on an articulated skeleton. If it's a painted skeleton, even better. You can look at where those muscles are attached relative to each other. The levator, le, levator costorum attaches to ribs. The iliocostalis muscles of the, uh, the true back group or the erector spinae attached to ribs. So just latissimus dorsi attaches to ribs. So just again, naming some more. Hope this video was helpful.